If you want to join us, you're more than welcome. 08717 We'll go straight to Mark, the Celtic fan. And you're going to love this, pal, because it says on my notes here that Pe- uh, Perry is annoyed, Mark. So here we go. Mark, welcome to the show. How are you? He's not the first. He won't be the last. Hello, Mark. Yes, how's it going, guys? Yeah, go on. Good, man. Oh, yours, Mark. What do you want to say, pal? Yeah, I mean, uh, Perry, I, I just, it's just this frustration, I think, that um, Celtic and Scottish fans in general have with, um, you know, the, the constant comparison between coming down to England, you know, you're talking about Celtic being a League One club. I mean, you know, you, you remind me of Durham a little bit here. You, you know, you're just trying to antagonise us. No, no, I'm and, not. I'm, no, I actually genuinely believe it. Honestly, I'm not trying to antagonise you. I no, actually no, believe no, it. You, you, you are trying to antagonise us. And I'll tell you why, Perry. Because if Celtic were to be in the English leagues, you know exactly where they would be. You know, they wouldn't be languishing in League One. They, they would be challenging because... You know the riches of the English Premier League. Now, I, I know that you could say this current Celtic team may be in League One, which I disagree with. You know, even, even this current Celtic team. We, we've got a massive rebuilding job to do on the back of what Neil Lennon left us with. The board have got um, a massive blame when it comes to that. But, I mean, it's just patronising for you to sit there and think, even this team, you know, th- th- this this team that we've got um, w- would not be in League One. We've just and, been beaten you know, by the second best team in the Danish Super League. Yeah, but but did you watch both games? And th- this is the other thing that annoys me, Perry. How, how many games do you watch the Scottish? If, Scottish I, I watched. Like, you, no, no, no. Wait a minute. You criti- criticised. You Scottish went out on team. two legs. It wasn't. You wasn't hey, unlucky. Well, if, if you let me finish. You don't watch the Scottish League, so so you criticise the Scottish League. You don't watch it. Did you watch the two legs that we we played against Midtjylland? Did Did you know that Nir Beaton got sent off when we were one 0 up with four minutes to go in the first half? No, you didn't. You're, you're looking at a bit of paper. But that's football. You've seen that Celtic have went out, and then you're making it a story. So you think you, know, it's un- you think Celtic have been unlucky over two legs against the second best team in Denmark? Come on, Mark. You- Let's have a bit of realism. When did, when, did, when did I say we were unlucky? You just said, did you watch both games? And you was alluding yes. that you think that you was a little bit unlucky. No, I didn't. I said, did you watch both games? I watched uh, the highlights of the first one and um, some of tonight as well, where you had right. a lot of possession, so got, which was I've fine. The, I've got you in the back seat right there. No. So, so no, I, I'm, I'm not saying that at all. I'm not, I'm not saying we were unlucky. So where do you think this Celtics that you've got, a, you've got no money, last season... You went out in the... Who's to say we've got no money? Well, you're not spending it. And uh, Postacoglu actually said himself, he's going there. Please, he's like, you haven't got, you haven't got a director of football. Sport. You but haven't... This is, the problem with, this is the problem with talk sport, right? What, having opinions? No. You, you, you don't know what's going on up in Scotland. So you, you're saying Celtic have got no money. I say, what basis have you got to say they've got no money? Because you're not spending you any. Know. You've got no head of recruitment. You've got no sporting director. The club's a mess. You don't think it is. You're probably as far away from Rangers as what you've ever been. 25 points last season, you was behind Rangers. Last season, you went out in the League Cup in the second round, Scottish Cup in the fourth round, Champions League second qualifying round, and the group stage of the Europa League. So where do you think Celtic are? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not disagreeing that we, are, we have a massive rebuilding job. My, my, my point to you is... That you on Talk Sport come in as this, um, you know, talking about Celtic as if you actually know what's going on north of the border. You're you're being passed notes here. And no, no, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hold on. Whoa, whoa. Mark, why don't, we we don't employ people to pass me notes and do my research. Don't worry about that. Trust me. I'm not being passed well, notes. I'm talking how well, I I've, see I've, it. I've, so I've you think you're going to win the title? You both games, are you, you are you going to win the title this year? The season's over. You're, you're nowhere near winning the title. What, what, what does this even mean? Again, this is like an Adrian Durham tactic. It isn't. To get people to phone up. Like we get, we, we get two out of the Champions League, and you say the season's over. What, why is the season over? Because you're so. We've got you're a not... couple of signings coming in. You know, it, it, it's just it is, it is laughable. You that think that you're going to challenge over. Rangers this season? Of course, we'll challenge Rangers. Right. I'll tell you what, Mark. Halfway through the season, right? When you're 15 points behind, then you can phone back in. And the reason I say about 
League One, your standard Celtic at the moment. Hull City, Peterborough and Blackpool got promoted this year. And Sunderland came fourth. Celtic wouldn't finish above Sunderland in League One. You're having a laugh, Perry. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm being dead serious. And you're, you're not telling me anything different. I've just told you I ain't got a head of recruitment. Just told you I haven't got a sport director. Postacoglu knows that there isn't going to be a lot of money to spend. Your average age of your back four tonight was 21 years of age. You're in the biggest hole that you've been in for 20 years. Well, at least 10, because you won the title nine times on the trot. Yeah. Well, I would agree with that. I mean, I do think that we've got a lot of... Uh, like I say, the purpose of my call is, is not to talk about the hole that we're in. I know we're in a hole. The, the, the purpose of my call is that this um, constant backlash against us for League One, you know, how would we compete in League One? And it's, it's such an unfair comparison, and I, I just don't understand why it keeps getting brought up. I'll tell you up. why, again, and, with and, this... And I, the other thing I don't understand is why why you're singing the praises of Rangers so much. I, I just, I, I don't understand it. Because Celtic they were outstanding. Over yeah. the summer, and we'll compete with Rangers. They were outstanding last season. You not you? I know you're a Celtic fan, and obviously you're a, a little bit sort of green and white tinted spectacles. But they absolutely obliterated you last twenty five points, and the reason I say about standards and, in, the, and, in, and they competed in Europe as well. Exactly, like standards. When I talk about League One, to describe, there's a player called Adam Rooney, right, who played for Oldham in 2013-2014. He scored four goals in League One. Oldham were fifteenth. He went up to the Scottish uh, Premiership. And he averaged for Aberdeen, he got 66 and 151. He was averaging over a goal a game. So there, there's the evidence that a goal scorer in League One struggled, went to the Premiership and ripped it up. And there's lots of strikers that have been in League One, League Two, gone up to Scotland and had far better records. Yeah, yeah. But Perry, what, what, what I'm saying to you is as soon as Celtic or Rangers got unleashed down south, then, you know, things change dramatically for them. You, no, at this time, you, I'm talking about where you are now. OK, well, well, I'll say this Celtic team would easily compete in... Once we get a recruitment in, in the, the Premiership, easily. Why haven't you got... that? Your club is a sham. You, you haven't got a head of recruitment now. You haven't got a sport... You start the Why season on... talking about a head of recruitment? Well, they're that the ones who get the players in. You do, you, your yeah. season starts on Saturday. Well, it does. And so your club's that's very well run, then you're telling me. The thing is, that's not that's not even what I'm. I was initially phoning to Chibion. I was saying, I, I don't, I don't understand this constant comparison about where Celtic will be in English leagues. Like, what, what, why? I, I just don't understand why you can't be right. Celtic, how how was the performance? What what was going on with it? You know. Well, this evening. Edward looked, I thought, a little bit off it. You missed, like, a few chances. You go 1-0 up, McGregor scores, then the game's yours. You couldn't see it out. So it's you're looking at it in your own, your own eyes, Mark, and I think you're being a little bit deluded of how poor that your Celtic team is at the moment. I think, I think Mark actually agrees with quite a lot of the things that you were saying there. It's the, 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 the reason for the comparison is because the majority of people that are listening to this show right now consume English football, the majority. Now, to make the comparison where Celtic would be right now in English football, Mark makes some good points. When Celtic are a superpower, aren't they? So if they do come... They were. If, yeah, well, they still are, mate. They're still a big club. They're well-followed. You yes. know what I mean? They've got fans all over the world, yes. you know? And if they did have... Pre if in, in his world, if they were a Premier League team and they had Premier League money, they could attract a certain amount of players because of the following. That's Absolutely. an attractive place to go and play. Wouldn't There's disagree. no doubt about that. Yes. And they would then become um, a far better side than they're at right yes. now. Your comparison, though, is, is right. Where they're at right now, now, that team, if you pick that team up and stuck it in England right now, where would it be? And like you're saying, you, you believe that to be uh, League One. Let's get um, a Rangers fan on, shall we? Because I, I've been wanting to talk a little bit about Rangers. Because with Celtic's demise and where Celtic are at, it becomes obviously less competitive for Rangers. It becomes a bit of a cakewalk, the league. Um, and I'm sure that's annoyed a, a few Rangers fans because they want comp competition as well. Ross is a Rangers fan. Ross, welcome. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good evening, gents. Hello, Ross. Evening, mate. Evening. Um, now, first of all, on Celtic's demise this evening and, and, and where they're currently at, you would think that the competition for you this season 
isn't necessarily there. Does that worry you when it comes to your manager? Because your manager is obviously, he's doing extremely well. He's come up, he's done the business for you, but he's an ambitious guy and I'm sure he's going to want some competition in his life sometime soon. And if Celtic can't offer it, he may look elsewhere for it. I wouldn't say so, no. I mean, Stevie Gerrard's come up here, he's just oozed class the whole time he's been here. Regards to the English media all the time saying that Gerrard may move to another English team, I think he's a little bit short minded because. He was a one-man team down there. He didn't want to leave Liverpool at all. He had a chance to sign with Chelsea, he never did. I definitely do not see Steven Gerrard going down there and managing a Norwich or a Newcastle just to get Premier League experience. It makes no sense to him at all to do that. And he wouldn't do it, as he's a massive man. He wouldn't do it. Uh, regards to the challenge this year, uh, you guys need to go up and see some old fun games because they might be in a bit of a state, but there's still challenges ahead for the Angels and we want to push on the standards we've got this year and keep on running everything. Listen, you're right in what you're saying regarding all firm games. They're absolutely tremendous. But Celtic last season were getting beat not just off yourselves. They were getting beat off other teams as well. So therefore, by the time they got to all firm games, you, you, were, you were well and truly out of sight. And regarding the Steven Gerrard thing, listen, he stayed at Liverpool for such a long period of time because he's a Liverpool boy. That's what he is. He, it was yep. his club. Um, with all due respect, Rangers aren't his club. He's making it his club. He's going up there, and I'm sure he's got a lot of love and affection for what he's doing there, and he's, he's becoming a bit of a legend in his own right. But at some point, he's going to want to push on, isn't he? At some point, he's going to want to test his managerial ability at the very, very highest level. Um, Completely agree with you there, but I mean, this year he's got a chance to manage in the Champions League. He uh, had a good yep. European run last year. And he's playing to fill houses, 55,000 at Ibrox every second week. You know, it's. I think I think what was getting a lot of people's nerves is saying that the Scottish leagues are slightly not as great. And I can, that's my shock you, but I honestly slightly agree with the Celtic fan previously that there's a bit of disheartening saying that they're a League One team. I don't see that, to be perfectly honest with you. I know they're not in a good way, but it's an unfair comparison. Maybe currently, yeah, I understand they get beat off the second best team in Norway just tonight, but. Denmark. Listen, top man, listen, we just had a little bit of trouble with your line there at the end, but it was a top cop. Uh, uh, Ross, thank you very much for uh, giving us a little know, bit of time. Ad, right? That Celtic are in a bad way, that Ross, the Rangers fan, is actually had sympathy for him and sticking up for him. Because <laughs> if Spurs are in that sort of state, I wouldn't be sticking up for him. So I'd say, yeah, you're probably right. They're about League One standard. Uh, 0817 Keep your calls coming in. We'll get you on the radio next. The Sports Bar with Andy Goldstein and Jason Cundy. Monday to Thursday night from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.